it's all about this video series how to do experiments with analog electronics and now it's part five the forge video stopped suddenly because i think my camera got too hot no things uh, no other things about that but anyway i was talking in video four about this high voltage circuit well uh, I talk, for instance, I told that these high voltage transistors in general don't have a high amplification factor, say 5 or perhaps 10, and they were used, that's very important to tell, in old school analog cathode ray tube circuits. So perhaps they were driven with a certain voltage, a certain high voltage on their base, of course they could handle, uh, that's a absolutely sure, between their collector and their emitter, a very, very high voltage. Type numbers in Europe were B, U, etc., etc. But uh, the aim of this series of videos is was to show uh, how to do experiments with analog electronics and i want to go further with that tell more about that etc and finally perhaps this is uh, a kind of strange video and i want to go back to the pure black box ID to give kind of understanding but only based on my practical um, experiences and experiments uh, about how to test and see the effects of inductance and capacitance. Uh, perhaps interesting to tell first, I didn't talk about it earlier, the second uh, breakdown effect. The second breakdown effect, uh, these transistors by the way don't suffer from that, they were made uh, especially to uh, get not that second breakdown effect and of course there's, uh, there's many information especially on the uh, specific special specialized websites uh, uh, why they don't suffer from from that uh, second breakdown effect but anyway transistors can suffer from that effect so here we have that uh, Silicon transistor, classical silicon transistor, power transistor. By the way, not, not, that's important to tell, not the 2 and 3055. The 2 and 3055 is such a good transistor with such good properties that it does not suffer suffer from the from the second breakdown breakdown effect and uh, that's the reason why we call that transistor this transistor the workhorse and I've made many uh, circuits with the 2 and 2 over 5 and oscillators power supply circuits etc etc I had an oscillator on 18 kilo cycles where the 2 and 3055 got extremely hot so you could not touch your hand with your hand the the, the collector but when it cooled down it worked properly that's in my opinion at least the best guarantee that such a transistor doesn't suffer from uh, the second breakdown 
anyway there could be uh, in this case an NPN transistor and let's say we have it here uh, collector base emitter in a circuit NPN emitter to ground base driven by whatever uh, voltage that the transistor gets extremely hot but there is a in a way a kind of graph that tells us something about the uh, temperature the supply voltage and it tells uh, about the collector current and the base current and this will in my opinion only be a quite simple explanation of the so-called second breakdown but in that graph there is a relation between the temperature the supply voltage the collect current and the base current and that means that when the voltage gets higher say in this case uh, 50 volt 60 volt the voltage gets higher the current in general raises but that of course also depends on the signal to the base that's here so the base current that flows here could be base current uh, realized by AC uh, at a certain level or by DC at a certain level and uh, uh, the second breakdown effect has this effect that given a certain uh, current uh, it can happen that the transistor gets defective due to temperature and uh, the strange thing is that we, when you look at the data sheet, um, the transistor must be able to handle that combination of voltage and current. But there is a certain moment, and perhaps I'm not uh, very precise in this explanation, but go to the World Wide Web for better explanation. On a certain moment the transistor burns out when it is operated uh, in its normal voltage and current range. And like I told earlier the 2 and 12 f 5 does not suffer from this effect. Anyway, uh, perhaps a somewhat too sloppy explanation of the second breakdown effect but anyway take it for granted study it much better there are many many uh, websites on the World Wide Web that can give you the very very best and precise information about that second breakdown effect. So finally in this video I want to get to the black box circuit back again. The 5F5 that I showed in the earlier videos
uh, showed that uh, showed that this is the five five five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, eight. Uh, and I show that when you make more or less random connections between the pins with random caps and random resistors, uh, you could get to new experimental uh, results. Other frequencies, other waveforms, better waveforms, uh, pulses, and especially important in my idea was this pulse that I could generate, so a kind of burst. That was very important in that case, and in general, when we uh, look and consider uh, a circuit as a black box, an electronic circuit as a black box, positive, negative, out, in, uh, there are always components inside. Th these components have pins, electrodes at their outside. And this is perhaps say, a very strange uh, thing to tell, but uh, there's, there's never a problem to do experiments uh, connecting the output to the to all these different electrodes. So here are many electrodes. And when you use, for instance, small value capacitor, 10 nanofarad, and connect that to different the different electrodes of such a circuit. And of course connect your oscilloscope, that's very important. This is my oscilloscope. Connect it and look what happens. That's so extremely important. Consider, say, an amplifier or a chip or whatever as a black box and do experiments. Change values between the resistor values or capacitor values between the electrodes, so don't go for, say, the standard um, components. That's very, very important, and in these cases, I put on my scope now, uh, not for uh, a specific reason, but you can with your scope detect all kinds of different waveforms, different phenomenon. Use your scope, be it a digital scope, could be everything. There are many, many uh, types of oscilloscopes or an analog scope like here, 20 megahertz maximum, and here a analog scope, 60 megahertz maximum, and a frequency counter they all can help to study a circuit, make other conclusions compared to the conclusions that were made by the people that developed a certain electronic circuit, etc. And also the circuit that you have made yourself. Thanks for watching.